tonight, feeling the squeeze. It's been over 20 years since our district has had a mill levy passed, um, which has created some great challenges for our district. Many smaller school districts forced to make tough decisions to shore up budget deficits, plus importing affordability. It has a very short VIN number being from Japan. And when I took it in, the lady was like, is this a real vehicle? These tiny Japanese trucks may be trendy, but there's a catch that has some saying, buyer beware. Your MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. A world tensions rising even more tonight after Iran threatens an imminent attack on Israel. President Biden had a one word warning for Iran. Don't. A U.S. official tells CBS News that the size of the planned attack aimed at military targets in Israel has grown in recent days. Iran has vowed to retaliate for an Israeli airstrike that demolished its consulate in the Syrian state of Damascus, killing 13 people. President Biden pledged support for Israel. We are devoted to the defense of Israel. We will support Israel. We will defend, help defend Israel. And Iran will not succeed. The Pentagon is repositioning a Navy destroyer in the region, joining another warship that is already there. Tonight in Billings, the third annual Mayor's World Languages Dinner was held. That event continues to grow each year, as does Billings International Connection. People from 60 different countries who now make Billings home were on hand speaking those languages. Mayor Bill Cole says the Magic City is the most ethnically diverse city in Montana. Just an opportunity to bring people from all over the world who live in Billings to come meet each other and just have fun. No political agenda. We're not raising money for anything. It's just a chance to connect and grow our community. The event also celebrated the native people and languages that were here long before anyone else settled in the area. Sheridan, Wyoming police say postings on an Internet site led to the arrest of a convicted felon who was manufacturing firearms with a 3D printer and also happened to be a registered sex offender. Police posted this picture on their Facebook page of the weapons and other equipment. A search warrant turned up a number of manufactured guns and other accessories. They also say evidence of marijuana cultivation was present. They did not identify the suspect who was arrested. Ballots for the school safety mill levy in Billings School District 2 will be mailed out next week on April 17th. That levy would improve safety in Billings schools by providing more resources such as camera systems, monitoring, visitor management and other emergency systems as well as more safety personnel. It would also fund a number of prevention specialists to address gangs and provide more counseling. The $5 million levy would increase taxes by around $60 a year for a home valued at $300,000. Well, this is the time of year when school districts in Montana put their budgets together for next year, and some districts are concerned that cuts may have to be made if they don't get the help they need from voters in May. Q2's David Jay has more on the challenges for Canyon Creek School and many other smaller districts. School districts across the state are facing funding challenges, including here at Canyon Creek. Last year, 58% of the voters were against a mill levy. The board believes that the trust is back and it's proposing another mill levy this year. Even with all the growth on Billings Far West End, a school district like Canyon Creek, like many others, is struggling. Our district, as with any others, are we're seeing the rise of cost of every little thing. Kelly Hickey is the board chair for the Canyon Creek School District, which is now turning to a proposed $136,000 mill levy to try and avoid what could be drastic cuts impacting students. We need some help. Last year, the board had to make some tough choices, planning to eliminate sports and some other activities this school year, until Valley Credit Union swooped in with a one-time donation of $22,000. The board hopes to avoid that scenario moving forward. Cutting back is just not something that, that we want to do. We want to serve these students well and want them to have the opportunities that everybody else has. It's important for our kids to have you know, effective classrooms and up-to-date curriculums. Sarah Kotke is vice president of the PTA, which has brought parents, teachers, the administration and the board together in search of solutions. It's just been a complete 180 from um, just some of, the, some of the stuff that we've had in the past. We've got just so much more camaraderie. The proposed mill levy of $136,000 
would add about $80 a year for a home with a taxable value of $300,000. Canyon Creek School sits just south of I-90 on the far west end, very similar to 72% of school districts statewide, which have fewer than 250 students. So I believe the funding formula is flexible. Superintendent of Public Instruction Elsie Arnson says all districts statewide are in the process of putting together their budgets, and only time will tell how many others will need to consider cuts or mill levies. We're here if they need any help, but I can't direct them to put on the levy. I cannot and nor will I ever tell them that they can or cannot. That is not my role as state superintendent. Tough decisions impacting students and families as districts like Canyon Creek look for ways to try and stay open despite uncertain futures. We can't predict the future. There has been no conversations of what ifs. Our focus right now is growing our school, growing our community, um, and keep on providing a great education and positive opportunities for our students. In Billings, David J, MTN News. Workers at the East Boulder Mine near Big Timber were kept from going underground today after sensors carried by employees showed elevated levels of mercury. A Sabanye Stillwater spokesperson says five employees came back with the elevated levels, something that has never happened there before. Mine officials are trying to determine whether the mercury came from an underground rock source or whether the tests were faulty. Mercury is a naturally occurring element that can be toxic even with small levels of exposure. It was a very warm day for Montana and Wyoming. We've had some rain showers moving around the region. As you can see, Dawson County, Weibo County, a few light rain showers. But that's already moving into western North Dakota. We already have more rain showers pushing into southwestern Montana, approaching Park County now too. Some lightning strikes around Madison County and Beaverhead County also. But we have more chances for in more uh, more warmth coming our way as well as some more showers and thunderstorms but today look how warm it was in the magic city had a high of 78 degrees only two degrees away from tying a record we have more warmth coming but other changes too it's not just tiny homes taking america by storm now so are these tiny trucks the vehicles manufactured in japan are becoming a hot commodity all across the country because of their five thousand dollar price tags but as Marcus Kakova reports, there is a catch. You might notice a few small differences between mine and Peyton's truck, but uh, I got to say, I'm a little jealous. I will say I'm uh, almost at the threshold for height. Peyton Hathaway is one of a handful of people across the country. Skip, skip. But when does this game get good? I saw one on Instagram about two years ago, and I thought, I need to have one of those. Making a change. So it's a 1992 Honda Acti, little three-cylinder engine, 660 cc's, uh, goes zero to 60 in like 45 seconds. This tiny truck might not make sense to everyone. What kind of things do people say about your truck? Wow, that's really cute. And that isn't <laughs> just because of the small form factor. I was actually fortunate enough to pick mine up in the States. I bought it off a guy in Missoula. But most of the time you have to import them straight from Japan. Hold your dispersions. Par for mileage with larger local used. The most popular pre-owned trucks for us tend to be between that twenty-five and $35,000 range. So I was actually able to pick mine up for about $5,000. Um, it only has 40,000 miles on it. <laughs> These small activity trucks are fit the price. However, they come with a learning curve. Right hand drive, which is a little tricky to get used to at first. A bit of work. Any rubber pretty much on the vehicle is going to need to get replaced. So far, I'm only into the truck for about I, if I round it up, probably four or five hundred dollars. And unique parameters. I think federally, they're not allowed for highway use. So interstates, probably a no-no. Peyton's truck might not be Montana's heavy hitter. Here in Montana, people use their trucks not only as daily drivers, but trucks. We do lots of blue collar things with our vehicles, you know, where I don't think these smaller trucks can do. But he says it meets his expectations. I see a lot of guys on Instagram put motorcycles in the back of it and strap it down. And most importantly, makes them happy. Got some crazy upgrades all provided by my wife. We've got the pandas, which aren't Japanese, but I won't tell her that. Marcus Kakova, MTN News. Ahead on the MTN 10 o'clock news here on Q2, the biggest dig in a generation 
discover some stunning artwork from a city destroyed by a volcano 2,000 years ago. And later in sports, Billings Pro Indoor Football Team getting ready to kick off a new season.